obviously the finger has been pointed at Israel. Israel has not claimed responsibility for this attack. But I would imagine this is still something that Hezbollah could retaliate against Israel for. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the evidence would suggest, or at least past precedent would also suggest, that this is something that Israel would do. I mean, these were pagers that were in the hands of a whole uh, dozens of, of senior commanders for Hezbollah in the south of Lebanon, in an area where Israel has essentially threatened uh, to open a new front in the a conflict we've seen in the Middle East since October 7th. So uh, certainly in keeping with that, I also did think the, the language from the White House spokeswoman, Karine Jean-Pierre, there was pretty telling. It seems like whenever there is an Israeli operation that Israel doesn't claim credit for, the U.S. always says it had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Just feels like this sort of language that we've now heard so many times from them. Um, but the big question for me is, okay, what next? So does this mean that this is a precursor operation that was meant to sort of take out a whole swath of Hezbollah commanders in anticipation of an Israeli invasion? Or is this just something that's uh, meant to hobble Hezbollah, keep them weak, keep them off balance as Israel continues the war? In and Gaza? does it draw a, a retaliation? We know that Israel uh, essentially told America to step back when it comes right. to military activity on the northern border, telling Amos Hochstein, representing the administration, there is now only a military solution uh, against Hezbollah. Is this the beginning of it? Well, I mean, that's the question we're all trying to answer. I mean, what you have seen from Hezbollah so far is a series of rocket attacks of varying degrees of intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some notion or expectation that if Hezbollah really wanted uh, a, a, a devastating attack on, on Israel, they could potentially do so, and they have held off from doing that so far. So... Big question about what Hezbollah does here, but really the focus is on Israel and what happens next and whether they are going to essentially open what would be a second front in that war. And at this point, the signs are, are indicating we're headed in a, in a very, very tense direction because, as you mentioned, Amos Hochstein, the president's envoy, goes to the region, essentially gets rebuffed by Prime Minister Netanyahu tells him to take a hike. I mean, it's just extraordinary language. Between well, and the allies. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is now in the region again for, what, the 10th time yeah. since October 7th, decidedly not going to right. Israel, going to Egypt instead. <laughs> instead. So what does that signal? Well, I, I mean, I think it says a lot of things. They are really feeling much more pessimistic about the chances of the ceasefire agreement, and there is just no indication that either side wants it. And you also have an administration that's torn between the imperative of wanting to run through the tape. This is a politically difficult issue at home. They obviously want to get this thing solved for political reasons, but also because of the devastating impact it's had in the region. But he keeps going to Israel and, and Blinken keeps getting turned away. The, the words are nicer, the pleasantries are there, but the result is essentially the same. He doesn't want to have that again.